Hi everyone, I'm Jella Gonzalez. And uh, good afternoon. I hope you're all safe and uh, I hope you're all excited to learn about uh, how businesses can adapt uh, in the new normal today. And uh, today we have our four experts who will help us navigate this uh, business climate that we find in. We're here to discuss several things. It's uh, how businesses can adapt, uh, take their business online, um, what digital tools to use, and uh, just as important, how to use these tools safely and protect your businesses as it makes the di digital shift. So as you know, the coronavirus has really created a massive disruption on a global scale. It affects all as aspects of economy, not the least of which are the small businesses, uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Uh, these comprise more than 99% of businesses in the Philippines, and they face an existential threat now uh, during the coronavirus crisis. We will now turn our attention to our experts. Uh, let's first do a quick intro. And uh, let's hear uh, their welcome messages, starting with uh, Sir Henry Aguda. Uh, thanks, Jello. Uh, first of all, salute to all the frontliners. Thank you for your heroism. Uh, and to, to everybody out there, hopefully you guys are safe and you know stay well. Uh, hopefully this becomes a very nice uh, sharing. And I know you'll, hear, you'll, you'll uh, learn a lot from my, my fellow panelists in this uh, session. Okay. Uh, Mr. Leandro Aguirre, uh, he's the National Privacy Commission's Deputy Commissioner. Uh, let's hear it from you. I'd like to thank um, Rappler and Project Lifeline for organizing this event and giving us an opportunity to reach out to all the different MSMEs and people who will be able to benefit from the discussion today. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, so we'll try our best to address all of your issues uh, and concerns. Okay, uh, we have Union Bank of the Philippines Vice President and uh, its Data Privacy Officer, Ms. Maria Montes. Ms. Maria? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, three weeks ago, uh, Mosbelt uh, and um, you guys, uh, we started this discussion and now we're now here in the webinar so i'd like to thank everyone for organizing this and i hope that this uh webinar would also help the msmes um my message to you guys is uh kapit lang nandito lang kami uh we'll help one another okay thank you and uh, last but not the least with that we have uh, mr samuel hakoba he's the founding president President of the National Association of Data Privacy Officers of the Philippines. Sir, good afternoon. Hey, good afternoon. Hi, Jello. Hi, Dino. Henry, Sasa. Um, gandang hapon sa lahat, ano? Uh, binabate rin namin lahat ng mga nanonood sa atin ngayon sa Bounce Back PH, official. Uh, alam mo, Jello, uh, tontawa kami that uh, na-invitahan kami dito ano, ng Lifeline sa ng Rappler. Alam mo, in the past... Uh, since the quarantine started, you know, uh, we started a small group sa Bounce Block PH and nagulat kami talaga. We're surprised with the growth. At the same time, we're surprised with the uh, you know, compassion you know, and love that we see uh, amongst uh, MSMEs, you know, uh, help each other uh, in all, every step of the way. You know, marami dyan dito tutulog, you know, just to uh, help frontliners bounce back, uh, poor communities bounce back, and of course, siyempre, uh, our hard hit in you know, MSMEs. So salamat sa pagkakataon na ito na no, makapanayam namin kayo dito sa inyo, inyong uh, webinar. Thank you and magandang hapon. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, ilang, how many members na ang move bounce back PH ngayon? Yan, dun sa ating official page, uh, hit close to 40K. And But yung mga ating vertical communities, like for example, sa education community, growing very fast. In fact, meron tayong isang webinar, uh, we hit 140,000 participants. Kasama dun yung mga replays. And hindi lang tayo sa Pilipinas ngayon, we've also gone uh, to other countries. We already have bounced back UAE, bounced back Singapore, bounced back Malaysia, and other countries, you know, uh, hindi lang kung saan, nasaan yung mga Pilipino, kasi kailangan din tulong ng ibang MSME sa ibang bansa eh. And as you know, and as you'll see later, you know, when you go online, your market is not just a country, it's the whole world. So, kaya taman tama and then lahat ng volunteers sa uh, Jello, wala talaga ano, all of us are volunteers sa uh, Bounce Back. So, again, no. salamat talaga. 
So mm-hmm. these are the people that we are trying to help today. And uh, mm-hmm. we'll do that first by understanding just what the new normal is for uh, businesses. Uh, let's start with uh, Mr. Aguda. So Mr. Aguda, it's really a very challenging landscape now for MSMEs. Um, but can you just give us a clearer picture of just where these businesses stand right now? You know, where they need to go as the crisis persists and uh, the role of technology now in this uh, sudden, unexpected uh, shift to digital. Yeah, uh, well, Jello, you know, maybe challenging uh, for a lot of the SMEs right now, but uh, uh, across all SMEs, all categories, right? uh, the nice thing about uh, the situation. Uh, it highlights the fact that SMEs need to now move digital. And you know, that's the advocacy of uh, Union Bank. It's always been to move as many people to the digital space. Now, kagandahan naman for our SMEs, there are so many options out there in order for them to go digital. So, and not just with Union Bank, but uh, with so many other things that they can use online. So, if they can go to online, they can see that they can expand their ability to sell uh, through the web, through the internet. And that's why this this uh, session is very important because as, as they go more digital, uh, the more they have to deal with data privacy issues over the internet. And the, the more they will have to deal with the uh, information security concerns. Uh, in Union Bank, uh, we can only offer our digital banking services in order for them to have access to funds at the same time, meron kami mga uh, solutions uh, that they just have to go online. Uh, we have Global Linker, which is uh, parang Facebook siya for SMEs. So I would encourage a lot of the SMEs to go there and check up on what's happening uh, in the SME space. So uh, yeah, the situation is not uh, the most ideal for SMEs right now, but everybody has to move on. And I think the way to move forward is go digital. And if they start going digital, they'll, they'll figure out that there are a lot of uh, help out there that they can uh, they can use. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, are all businesses able to take advantage of uh, these digital tools? Or pili lang ba? May mga businesses lang ba na talagang naturally maganda siya gawing digital? Or mm-hmm. are businesses really able to take advantage of these tools, all sorts? Well, lahat. Uh, I mean, digital can expand from what we're doing, diba? So we're doing webinars. Normally, uh, kami nila Sam at saka nila Commissioner, madalas kami sa mga events, eh, and we speak out in public about our advocacy, data privacy, cybersecurity, what have you. But this is one form of going digital. So from events to being able to tap new customers to uh, even seeking uh, financial resources, uh, I think all businesses can go digital unless your business is, uh, let's say, ano ba, uh, transportation. Uh, that might be difficult, diba? If How can you go digital in terms of uh, transferring one, one person to another place? But uh, may not be the whole business model, but uh, you can digitize the way it can be booked. Well, we've seen that with right uh businesses. Naman eh. So I think all businesses can find a digital enabling tool that can help their businesses right now. Okay. It's uh, So we're just about to go into another phase of uh, the lockdown, which is the general community quarantine um some of some part of the workforce will be able to return but a certain portion will still have to work from home so how do you uh, restrictions what tools and digital services can you suggest uh, for businesses to use to somehow achieve a level of business efficiency even during these uh, tough times well, uh, there are open marketplaces that uh, you can use. Like, like I've said, uh, you have Global Linker, or hindi lang asya local, eh, but also international. But beyond that, you know, the video conferencing, the ability to send emails, uh, you, you'd be surprised from the ECQ 
we, uh, we do deliver the ECQ happened. We thought we won't be able to deliver ATMs and credit card. But then we started going online and, and checked out the uh, fintech delivery uh, uh, companies such as Antas, Doiray, Grab. And they were able to modify their business model to deliver our cards. I mean, but I guess the point there is you just have to explore. Uh, and there's so many out there to you know, to choose from. Uh, not just from Union Bank, but uh, also from other providers that are out there. Mr. Hakoba, so it's uh, from Bounce Back, from the Bounce Back community. Uh, yep. Are you, are you seeing these uh, transformations right now? Maybe Maybe you can share with us how some of the uh, businesses have been using digital tools. Uh, baka may mga best practices tayong ma-share dyan. So, Jello, you know, uh, yeah, when you see an opportunity, diba, if you're an entrepreneur, you grab it. Eh. So, most of the transactions happening within the group uh, right now, it's about uh, healthcare products, uh, primarily to support our frontliners. Uh, and, of course, kasama na yung backliners saka yung sideliners. No? So, it's called pandemic economics. Eh. I mean, you really sell uh, those uh, solutions, services, you know, products and platform that will help, you know, um, the country bounce back. And, and kasama nga is that, uh, of course, you need to fulfill day-to-day -day needs that were disrupted, you know, by the quarantine. We're seeing, for example, some businesses, uh, Pivot. So, salimbawa yung mga, well, yung Angkas, for example, hindi na allowed yung dalawa sa motor, di ba? So, they cannot uh, do their service. So, Angkas pivoted and then they, into the delivery, food delivery service. Um, so, uh, one of our partners also, si Lazada, they uh, gave free webinars. They became really, really very generous in giving away uh, free webinars uh, so that you can put up your store. Even another partner, I mean, similarly, si Shopee also did that. So, uh you know, we were surprised really a lot of uh, entrepreneurs are agile, you know, very agile. Uh, and at the same time, they were able to uh, identify where to go, you know, and at the right time. Uh, one of our uh, lead volunteers also, si RJ Ledesma, uh, has uh, transformed his business, you know. He's, uh, he's the founder of Mercato, di ba? Mercato, like, it's like, you go there, it's like a weekend uh, food food bazaar, right? Uh, and you can smell the food, you know, but he, can, he cannot do that now. So what he did, he transformed his business and turned it into a delivery service. And so he's seeking more partners, actually, uh, because, uh, again, uh, since when he went online, I mean, the whole, you know, the whole universe, I mean, just, well, currently the whole Metro Manila became his, you know, became his uh, market. So, yep, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, and at the same time, plug ko na rin, no? we're documenting all of these. And, uh, you know, along with uh, our founders, Jason De La Rosa and our co-founders, we're going to put up these best practices and share them for free. So, currently, as you can see, sa Bounce Back, and dami talagang, ano, dami talagang free webinars and free content that you can consume uh, to help you to develop the skills that you need so that you'll be able to bounce back better than ever, you know even during the crisis and more so after the pandemic crisis is over. So, yep. Later, I'm going to share to you a simple framework that I prepared for this discussion uh, on how, you know, that's, there are building blocks for entrepreneurs, you know, that they can use uh, so that they can bounce back better than ever. Okay. So it's really the ability to pivot now and to identify uh, these opportunities, right, sir? Yep, definitely. definitely. And see, see, dapat kasi... And dami yun talaga nagahanap ng ano negosyo, di ba? So, kailangan talaga, you need to, you know, seize it first, okay? And uh, don't worry about the mistakes. You know, everybody's making mistakes now. But you learn from them, eh. But the important thing is that nga, we prioritize also. Supportahan natin, lalo na yung nangangailangan ngayon, during these times, especially our frontliners. And those who are continuing to serve us, di ba? Yung ating mga sidelines and backliners. So, yun, seize it lang. That's the more important thing now. Okay. Okay, uh, Sir Sir Henry, so with all these uh, smaller businesses nga pivoting, uh, what do you believe is the role of uh, bigger establishments naman, bigger businesses in uh, assisting uh, these uh, MSMEs? Well, uh, bigger establishments like uh, us, Union Bank, where we have the uh, muscle, so to speak, to uh, increase awareness of uh, how they can survive in this economy, we're doing it. So okay. other other bigger or uh, conglomerates like uh, we've seen it in the news, they've been extending assistance uh, up, up to the point of 
them doubling up their CSRs. So I think the the bigger conglomerates can do that. But note also that the big big companies are dealing with the same issues. So whether you're an SME or a huge corporation that's been dealt for for a while, you're also uh, dealing with the same problem. And the solution is uh, similar to most everybody. Eh? The more you can transform your business model to be social distance compliance, that's a problem now. Uh, have to do it from a distance and uh, to digital means. So, so everybody just has to come together uh, in terms of a Bayanian spirit and start sharing and advocating for uh, better services that we can do without you know, compromising the safety of people. So social distancing equates to digital, uh, digital place. OK. Um, you know, so many people are really, uh, were really caught uh, by surprise by this uh, virus, uh, businesses included. Um, you know, uh, they're, they're suddenly transitioning now. What, what are the possible snags in this transition? so that they can avoid this thing in your survey? Well, two things. One, data privacy, and other one is cybersecurity. They're tied up together. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we suddenly wake up one day, and we woke up one day, and, and we didn't leave our homes anymore. We're, we're working from our houses. So, our workforce in Union Bank are majority of them are working from their home. So when you don't have that line of sight supervision of your employees, uh, there are less physical securities that you can apply. And that is a concern because imagine uh, some information you cannot even take out of the office are now being handled by people who are not physically present in their offices. So the infrastructure that you should have would combine the ability to protect you from uh, information security theft and data leakages. So th those those are the two big uh, big issues. And more and more as the day goes by, people will talk more about uh, how secure is work from home. Mm -hmm. Everybody now is happy uh, to to change the way they deliver services and the way they operate their companies by doing it from their homes. But then you know, people will start asking now how secure it is. And those are those would be the, the two yes, cybersecurity and then data privacy. Okay. And uh, I think uh, Deputy Commissioner uh, Leandro Aguirre will be able to explain more on that uh, from, from, you know, from the legal side. Um, can you help us understand these online threats, sir, uh, that face these businesses going online? You know what are you know, help us understand the responsibilities that a business has has uh, to its users in keeping uh, you know personal information safe, as laid out in our Data Privacy Act. You know how are SMEs uh, treat, treated under the Data Privacy Act? So, so we'll start with with just um, a clarification. It's not we're not just focusing on the consumers, the customers of all these MSMEs. We also have to look at the data privacy of their employees. Because I think what happened with our with our situation now, as Henry mentioned earlier, a lot of companies were thrust into this situation and I'm not sure how many of them were really prepared to make this shift to digital, to a work from home arrangement. So, we have to look at how they're able to manage uh, and protect the information of their customers as well as their employees in this in, in this shift. So part of the challenge there will be in trying to take their business digitally, do they have the proper tools that they, that they will need to do so, transact business online, in a safe and secure manner, both from a data security and a data privacy perspective. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, of these businesses may be forced to use any and all means just to be able to rush to transfer their business online. Right? Even if those particular tools are not 
the most appropriate ones or the most secure ones. So they will, given the situation, baka mag choose sila ng ease of use over what will be a better tool para maprotektahan yung information na kailangan nilang protektahan. And we don't blame them. We understand that we're forced given the circumstances. But we're hoping that as people learn more about data privacy, they won't look at it as something that will be uh, something that will stop them from innovating, but actually something that will enable them to innovate better. So there was a 2017 study by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas that said, I think 47% of account holders with internet access are wary of e-payment platforms because they're afraid of security issues such as hacking. Um, but I think since 2017, there are a lot of tools, uh, a lot of innovations that banks and other digital companies, vendors have put in place to be able to better protect the situation. And the reason I'm bringing this to uh, this BSP study here is at the end of the day, what we need to do is to enable people to trust businesses that have transitioned online. Well, they, they need to know that when they transact with these different MSMEs, their information will be secure, that the payment platform that these people will utilize will be secure. So yun yung mga kailangan nating pag-isipan, di ba? Na paminsan, while we understand that we want to take our business online right away, we have to be mindful of choosing the appropriate platform, security measures, para maprotektahan din natin. Because at the end of the day, yung trust ng no consumer sa mga businesses na to, yun naman yung mag allow for all of these businesses to continue uh, so, well, to continue existing, Kasi, mm -hmm. so that's what we need to 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 manage in this particular time. Mm -hmm. And the National Just, Price Commission is here, diba? to to provide that guidance, to provide help as much as we can. And you know, we, we're not here to say this is the law, and therefore we don't care about your circumstances. Mm -hmm. We are very much aware of people's circumstances and we are taking this into consideration and trying to reach out to them to help them as best as we can during these times. Mm -hmm. Just how important is this uh, trust factor that uh, you were talking about? Because we're parang <clears throat> madrash eh, na, oh, we have to go online, we have to go digital now. That sometimes you may overlook that part where you keep your customers' information secure. How in, how important is that trust fa in, in establishing that trust factor in uh, customers and employees as well within the company? I think for, for me, um, maybe Henry, Sam, and Sasa can chime in. But mm -hmm. trust is something that businesses spend so much time building over a course of years. Right? They spend so much money trying to gain this trust and to lose that now simply because nagmadali tayo to take our business online sayang sayang naman diba? and there are so many available tools out there that will allow these businesses to transition to transition online properly mm -hmm. i think the most important thing for them to figure out is in this process of moving their business digit to digital, they have to understand, are they doing the right thing? It's not just a matter of, oh, we can collect information now that we would not be able to collect before because we now have a digital platform. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand, do they need to collect that information just because they now have the mechanism or the tools to allow them to do that? If it's not necessary, to collect that in order for them to deliver that service that they're selling or that good that they're selling, then maybe hindi na nila kailangan collectahin yung additional information and because that would entail additional responsibilities on their end to protect that additional information that they collect. So baka sina Henry and Sasa can provide more input than sa trust and what tools they can avail of. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, before that, can we just uh, talk about uh, 
some of the parts of the law, how will the existing law and the uh, issuances apply to the new situation? Just, I guess, the basic details of it and then tell them where they can find uh, more detailed information if uh, they need to. Okay. Um, in terms of how the law applies to the mm -hmm. current situation, it applies in the same manner. The law operates on the basis of an accountability principle, which means if a company is the one that makes decisions on what information to collect and processes that information, makes decisions on that information, or gets someone to process information on their behalf, then mm -hmm. that company under the law is called the personal information controller and is the one accountable to com uh, with complying with all the different obligations and responsibilities set out so law. So part of these, if we can break it down into three general principles, you have the principle of transparency, which means all these companies have to exert effort to explain to their customers and their employees why they're collecting what they're collecting and do it in a manner that's easy to understand. Mm -hmm. So it depends on who their customer is. They have to tailor the language so that their customer will be able to understand. So, and we determine whether they're transparent or not by simply asking, naiintindihan ba na customer nila? Kung hindi naiintindihan na customer nila, then baka hindi sila naging transparent. Aside from transparency, we also look at the legitimate purpose of what they are processing. So as I mentioned earlier, do they need to collect all of the things that they're collecting? Is there a legitimate reason for them to collect all of those things? So tying it up with the last principle, so legitimate purpose and proportionality. So proportionality, a simple way of looking at it is, am I collecting more than I need to? Am I processing more than I need to? Can I process this in a way, or, sorry, can I deliver the service without actually utilizing these additional things? Okay. So, so I think if we look at those three, that hopefully will be able to guide customer, uh, sorry, all these companies moving digital in determining how they process information. Do they need to collect all of these things? Um, in terms of what they're expecting from their employees, do they, how do they monitor employees? Mm -hmm. um, so, yung mga pong bagay, kasi, diba, the idea what that we're trying to do away with is just because people can collect it, doesn't they mean that they should. Diba? So, parang ganun yung kailangan natin isipin. And this goes not just with our current situation, this applies regardless of the current situation. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, you know, uh, one, uh, I, I guess one of the biggest parts of uh, taking your business online is uh, how you con how you uh, do your transactions, you know, money. And you just mentioned the, the trust factor. And a lot of that uh, is connected to the money that we send to people and then we receive. Uh, Ms. Sasa, can you give us a, a rundown of what the pitfalls, possible pitfalls are here for businesses taking their uh, app online and what should be the considerations when choosing an e-platform to transact on? Okay. Um, for If you're a business owner, uh, first, you need to determine what personal information you need from your clients. If you don't need it, as uh, Depcom said, don't collect it. Uh, but these days and time, um, most of the uh, online platforms that we have, the applications that we are using, or these businesses are, you know, subscribing into, um, naturally, in, naturally and inherently collect um, inf personal information of the client. So, this is um, with respect to the delivery of the service and so on. Um, if you're a business owner, you need to know on what extent of personal information of the platform owner that you're subscribing into, would um, would you need to collect? Or for example, I'm a restaurant owner. I've sub I subscribe in uh, Food Panda or Grab. Um, do I need to know the name of um, the one who wants this food delivered or or not? Um, if of course, if you're um, a platform or a business owner, you would want that for you to 
know what kind of customers you're catering into and so on. However, there, there's this um, concept of a privacy notice or privacy policy. If you're SME, uh, I, I, I always suggest this to, to my friends who are your business owners, that they um, have a privacy policy in their restaurants, um, determine the uh, collection points, um, how, um, how they are collected. So for example, if they're ordering uh, on the spot or they're in the restaurant, uh, there's a CCTV, so they need to inform the customers that uh, there's a CCTV, and these are for security reasons. Um, and then if they're going to use the platforms or our food delivery platforms, their personal information will also be exposed to these online platforms and so on. And in that way, um, um, those kinds of um, notices would provide us a certain level of comfort if you're a customer to the business owner or the to that particular establishment that they're serious about you know privacy of their clients and that's a start and um for um for us um in for example in union bank we're we're providing these kinds of platforms to our various customers and when they ask us um uh, what are the privacy controls so we we show them um that we conducted privacy impact assessment of the platform, that there are security controls all over it, and that the data of their customers are protected. And in that way, they have already have a level of comfort that, okay, um, you're serious. So we're also serious about uh, protecting our clients. So it's more of a, it's a, it's a joint accountability that uh, it's really important, especially in these times. Um, in fact, um, in this COVID season, um, this situation, um, I encountered more questions about privacy um, within two months um, as compared to the years I've been practicing privacy in the last five years. So um, I, we, we actually call this COVID season um, a privacy awareness um, time because everyone becomes suddenly well, I'm aware of privacy, especially when you know um, their personal information are being subjected to certain discrimination or humiliation. For example, if you're a frontline, or sometimes you get discriminated and so on, and this somehow creates um, additional awareness on on the public. And you know, um, I am part of a data privacy council where in all the data protection officers nationwide are you know convening. So we have this regular meetups. So I call it therapy sessions. That's where we you know share um our experiences and you know common common challenges. And you really see how cha um the challenging these times are, especially in other sectors. And one, uh, no, just to ex um, share with you as well, um, mm. these sectors will really need uh, our help. And th this is also the reason why I um, I immediately jump in when when Mossbelt Mos and um, Bounce Back presented this idea because I really, um, I, we really need to assist these sectors and uh, for us to have a, you know, to conquer this challenging times altogether. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Montes. So there must be a lot of uh, scams as well. Uh, and uh, can you just give your advice on that? These uh, basic scams that, you know, they may seem so simple, but people still get caught uh, uh, with these uh, things. Can you talk about that? Uh, yeah. In, in scams, um, you really have to pay attention to uh, to what you're you know clicking. So think before you click. Um, the banks or any other establishments will not ask you personal information about you through email or SMS uh, unless uh, you call them directly and then you want something changed in your accounts. Uh, but if you think if you receive those inf um, emails you just assume that it's already uh, a scam. So don't uh, don't click them. So once you click these links, uh, you 
uh, you will be subjected to um, data theft or even compromise your accounts. So, and I'm pretty sure um all the banks and all of um all, all of the um sectors in the financial industry have been you know hammering on this campaign since uh, time immemorial, and especially now when when the cyber attacks have been very rampant because of course um mm. uh, everyone's going digital so even even the even crimes are going digital so okay yeah. are are the hackers are these uh you know the ill intention are they attacking small businesses as well or are they, are they focusing on bigger businesses or are small businesses at risk as well they're um they don't have any particular target in general um for me it's quite easier to to target um the retail ones the smaller businesses because of course um probably lack of knowledge of what what are the attack vectors that are there and, and this is also why we're doing this campaign is for them to be knowledgeable of those kinds of attacks that may uh, happen to to them so Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I believe we have a presentation from uh, from Mr. Hakoba. Yeah, yes. yeah, this is very short, uh, Jello. So, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Yep, this. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Jello. Uh, you know, this is a very simple way for you know uh, entrepreneurs and uh, mm -hmm. of course MSMEs to be able to bounce back you know, with the crisis. Uh, this is just a simple framework. Uh, I call it the nine building blocks that can sustain online businesses during uh, times of crisis. You know, at the center of this one, of course, is the customers. You know, we should still be customer centric especially during these times and uh you know underneath this uh you know are the three uh typical foundations uh, that you should be already setting up right now first you begin with your costs or this is your why like if you intend to go into an online business and you just want the money it's not sustainable you know you'll be burnt out uh, you know uh with all of the uh, you know, stress that you have to go through your cost should reflect your personal you know why or your advocacy and on the left and right side, this is what you know. Uh, Bansback is uh, already doing on the competencies. Uh, Bansback has uh, another uh, advocacy called Bansback Academy. You know, it's it's not a school, okay? But uh, you know, it's uh, it's actually our uh, campaign uh, to help entrepreneurs. You know, uh, to gain skills, knowledge, at the same time to look at their business. You know, and see areas where they can improve on. They may be able to also identify new categories. That's the one on the left, right? So, uh, already, I think we have already trained uh, close to two hundred fifty thousand plus plus already uh, on the Bounce Back Academy. Okay. So, on the left and right side of the customer tile, you can see community and connection. You know, uh, I'm reflecting on the participants of this, uh, you know, webinar. You know, uh, three things that uh, struck me. You know, uh, during these times, you need to stand on the shoulders of giants like Union Bank. You know, to be able to overcome the crisis and to bounce back better. You also need to stand side by side, you know, with guardians like the National Privacy Commission. And third, you know, you need to be nurtured by a community like Bounce Back PH, you know, so that, you know, you emerge, you know, to be a much better entrepreneur, more compassionate, you know, more agile, more proactive. And of course, at the top, uh, these are the things, you know, that you should pay attention to once you get into an online business. In the first a lot of people, you know, they really take this for granted. You know, the, the conversations, you know, uh, you know, we get the point to really answer, you know, all questions, you know, that come our way, either through a chatbot or through, a, you know, it can be an automated response. But, you know, within those conversations, you don't know who's the ones talking, right? It may be a customer that can give you huge lifetime value. At the same time, conversations also can help you look at the insights. You know, are your customers, you know, responding properly? For example, are you delivering the value that they have expected from you? And of course, you know, content uh, is king. Uh, well, context is queen, right? You will not be able to, you know, be able to scale an online business if you don't have the proper content. And it can be, a, like this one, a webinar is already con a content. You can create ebooks, for example, simple blogs, photos, videos that you can share to your community. And of course, Commerce, uh, just best practice. A lot of our, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurs are giving free new. They're free, okay, initially, uh, just to give them, give their customers a taste on what they can deliver. 
So these are the nine build, building blocks. I'm actually uh, finished an ebook on this, which I'm going to give away for free also to the Bonds Back Network. So again, remember, you know, customers at the center, you know, uh, improve yourself to your, in your competencies, anchored on your costs, you know, play in the right category or ecosystem, you know, um, join communities or build one, establish connections, as I mentioned, find giants like Union Bank, guardians like the National Privacy Commission, and of course, communities like uh, Bonds Block PH. And then conversations, you know, you have to converse, you have to have dialogues, you know, with, uh, with your customers, you know, and then serve them really great content, and then commerce will happen. So this is just the, you know, the uh, short, uh, you know, uh, presentation. Shout out to Sam Acosta, Acosta by the way, he's uh, watching this. Sam, uh, I met him when I was at Yahoo. So, kumusta Sam? He's, I think he's based in Singapore, so. Okay, salamat Jello, that's the uh, okay. short presentation. So it's truly a whole of community approach. Uh, if we yeah. are, yeah. if uh, small, medium enterprises are to uh, thrive in this uh, new climate, Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So um, I guess we can move on to our Q&A portion now. Uh, we will be taking questions from uh, our viewers, and we have actually selected a few. And we will uh, start with uh, this question from uh, Gabriel Leda. Uh, are there feasible online opportunities for uh, smaller businesses that don't have the capacity to set up online services like apps? Who wants to take that question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello. Yon. Perfect. Hi. Perfect. So mm -hmm. I I, I So I started off by saying, if you're an SME right now, go to a community site and just go to uh, unionbank.globallinker.com or Google Global Linker. You'll find there that community. Within that community, you'll see uh, several thousand of uh, SMEs and from there you can interact you can ask questions and these SMEs are all digital by the way uh, some of them came from brick and mortar that have moved to digital now if you're going to ask if I'm a Sari Sari store or if I'm uh, uh, a small business that is brick and mortar and because of ECU I cannot uh, you know I cannot tell people that I'm available mm -hmm. You have to put together a website or a, an online site. And we also have a product, and it's for free. Everything that I'm sharing with you are, are free services that we extend. You can go to uh, a service called Centro. It's spelled with an S. And what it, it will do is you can create your own online site. Parang you have your online store na kagad. So from Centro, Another thing that you can do is you also get on board to our platform called Box, B-U-X. Just Google B-U-X. And from there, you can sell items on Facebook and you can be paid through, through Facebook. So imagine if you have items in your houses right now that you want to sell, create a site for free, uh, log, uh, sign up to BUX and you get uh, paid for it for free. Another thing that I would recommend uh, everybody who's uh, running an SME to go to is download our app. It's a banking app, but from that banking app, there are a lot of services you can do. Uh, it's not enough that you're able to sell. You should be able to be paid as well. And to be paid, you can, with our app, you can be paid uh, online or uh, we also created this service where you can cash out the money from 11,000 points of presence from Palawan Express to Pera Hub to Cebuana. Uh, it, it's, it's one of those services that we've created in the past uh, few weeks during the ECQ, specifically to help SMEs who are stuck in their houses right now to go online and start doing their commerce and their services. And the nice thing about it also is, uh, you know, a lot of... Uh, all of this is the topic that we have right now is also privacy and security. Uh, we Union Bank, from its part, can can guarantee that the platforms that we offer to the public, even though it's free, are very compliant with privacy requirements. Uh, we've been working so much with the the group of uh, SAM through NADPA. We were working also with the NPC through Commissioner Aguirre, and you know. The only, reason, the only reason why we're confident enough to bring digital assets to the public is we know that 
these guys have helped us make sure that our services are fully compliant together with, of course, SASA out there. So I hope that helps. Uh, these things are free. Take advantage of them. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, we will go to the next question from uh, Sam Acosta. Well, it's not a question, but uh, he's asking our uh, comment on this. Uh, it is our whole, whole country that is affected by this pandemic crisis. However, taking businesses online seems to be confined within those in the urbanized areas with more stable internet infrastructure. What is our take on this? Perhaps Mr. Sam? Oh, okay. So yeah, that's uh, my talk ayo Sam. No? Well, to change the, the infrastructure of the country, uh, you know what the telcos can do, for example, they can white label several sites, right, that uh, for MSMEs, so that you don't have to use data when you access them. The cost of a smartphone now is only around 500 pesos, and there are applications already that are optimized for those, uh, you know, entry level uh, Android phones. And I think it's just there are a lot of NGOs actually that are helping, you know, the grassroots, uh, those micro businesses, you know, in the you know in the rural areas. And it's just a matter of you know uh, enabling them. Again, using the framework that I presented, you know, just plot through that one. Uh, it's actually applicable for you know all types of businesses. Again, it begins uh, you know with the customer who are their customers. Like if it's only local, for example, we're seeing the emergence of uh, uh, what we call survival gardens, right? Uh, if it's only local, you can have a hyper local application only within your town or in your the towns beside your your towns, so a hyper local solution, for example, for MSMEs will be enough already to provide business uh, for a for, for a small backyard agriculture business. Uh, you know, you can you can sell, for example, uh, you know the fresh produce or uh, you know uh, packaged produce already uh, through a hyper local application. So yes, just need to gather this, and at the same time, you have to be more creative. Then again, point, you know, again, let's, let's ask the telcos to white label, you know, most of the sites right now so that data will not be needed to access, uh, you know, those uh, commerce sites. So maybe that's the first step to address the infrastructure. And then to address the skills, there's a lot of free webinars, as I mentioned, okay? And of course, the content is just a matter of helping them put together, for example, a product brochure. You know that they can go. I don't know if people are opening up behind the ano, ng Union Bank. I know just need the uh, in five minutes you already have a bank account and you can already receive payment for your products through Union Bank. So and that means solution. It's just a matter of you know putting them all together and then uh, putting them in the front of MSME, especially those rural areas. So salamat sa question again, uh, Sam. Tama Costa. So thank you. From uh, I guess Miss Montes, um, how would you comment on this? Ano as a uh, from uh, your perspective, coming from uh, from a bigger establishment, did miss some? I did miss uh, Sasa drop. Okay. Okay. Um, Sir Aguirre, what uh, our the current environment, the current uh, technical environment, uh, the internet infrastructure in the Philippines? What uh, do, what do these uh, things uh, bring about? In terms of challenging the, our smaller enterprises, <clears throat> I, I don't. I don't think. Well, I, well, true. It is. It is a challenge, right? And as Sam mm -hmm. mentioned earlier, there are a lot of available tools out there that, that can be can be utilized by all of these um, MSMEs, whether they have a stable internet access or not, to be mm -hmm. able. To to move their businesses online. I think um, we don't need, I think, I don't think all businesses need tremendous bandwidth to be able to move their business online um, if they take advantage of all the available options out there. Simply trying to consider how you're able to present your, your business to different people, you can take advantage of Facebook and I understand Facebook already is being whitelisted by a lot of telcos or it's part of the packaging of, that's being offered for free or by different telcos. So there are different opportunities out there and it's just a matter of them taking advantage of those opportunities to 
to put themselves out there, to be able to market their products, the services that they offer. Then yeah. taking advantage of other solutions naman, to be able to process and deliver the services in a safe and secure manner. So I think we we can take advantage of different solutions depending on what is uh, what is needed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned nga, uh, Facebook. I, I guess that's one of the tools talaga that people are looking at because it's uh, readily accessible. But can you just share some uh, advice on how to still keep uh, information safe uh, on that uh, platform? Not just Facebook, but uh, people are also using other social media platforms. Just some gu guidelines on that. I think when when you're using all of these different social media platforms, so I, I know people are selling on Instagram, people are putting uh, messages, um, advertisements on different Viber groups. Uh, the Bounce Back PH um, has information on different businesses that deliver in certain areas. So I think, yeah, we do want to take advantage of these because they equip MSMEs to provide the necessary services during this particular time. In terms of some basic guidelines, we want to minimize, if not completely eliminate, asking for personal information on the thread itself. Please don't do any transaction on the, on the public thread, right? Direct message the, the vendor so that your information will only be read by that specific person. I don't think you'd want to put your name and address for, where everyone can see it. So direct message natin para kung sino lang yung dapat makakita, siya lang makakita. And for the vendors naman, because you're only using the name and address for that specific transaction, I think it would be good that as soon as the transaction is completed, to already delete that information because you never know what's going to happen. Diba? Parang at least it gives you something less to worry about if you've already deleted that information because you no longer need it. If that person orders again, just ask them to provide you with their name again, their address again, and their other contact information. So okay. I think we can... I don't want to people to get confused when it comes to data privacy. A lot of it is really common sense, right? If it doesn't seem like it's something you'd be comfortable doing, then please don't. Sabi nga ni Sasa kanina, di ba? Ingat-ingat sa mga kiniklik natin. If you don't want everyone to know where you live, then don't post it there. So, hindi naman siya kailangan ng ganun ka-complicate. Okay. Um, Sasa, uh, has, have you really seen an increase in the number of people? You know, before we move on to the next uh, user question, I just wanted to ask this. Have you really been seeing, uh, I guess, uh, an uptick in the number of uh, users making use of uh, digital payments uh, in transacting with uh, these online businesses? Um, yes. Um, in fact, um, in Union Bank, it has increased dash drastically. And um, with that, also, um, we also have to monitor, of course, the infrastructure, so which we have already been anticipated way back. And not that, in, it's more than the transaction, um, it's more of the digital account opening that has spiked up. Um, in fact, um, we recorded around 2,000 plus um, more digital transaction opening and uh, digital account opening from last year. So it's really uh, a good indicator that everyone's doing digital um, now. And at the same time, uh, with, with that, uh, we have to secure also the perimeter um, as well. So we have to beef up our monitoring and so on. Um, and we're doing that um, from, from our homes. And, and I, I could say that um, the... This is just ano, um just an experience. When the Taal erupted last January, we simulated this BCP, this business continuity procedure. And we didn't know that we'll have a full scale um months later of uh, BCP. Um so in, in a way we kind of prepared um ourselves not just um on a cybersecurity level but also uh on on um 
operational level and yeah. and it's something that um we have to also consider in in protecting because we um even NBI and the PNP has recorded an increase in online cyber attacks like around 300% if i'm not mistaken the last mm -hmm. record and it's something that we really have to take into consideration uh, especially now um but of course you can see that the banks are very serious of on um going after these individuals so you can see police officers apprehending hackers uh, in, in on the television so it, it it's our way of saying that you know we're watching our our um our perimeter so so there okay. do you think we're just still at the point where where we're learning to trust uh digital payments i'm guessing the the millennials will be more comfortable with the platform right so but where are we i mean where are we in terms of uh, being trustful of uh, these uh, digital payment plat payments platforms? Because <clears throat> that's um, where that's where the customers will be transacting uh, in the long run. <clears throat> one is um we first provide them with um, seamless user experience. Um, millennials are impatient, so they really want uh, a seamless experience. No, um, not much um, hassle on 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 entering the app but also we employed um certain um additional mm -hmm. security measures like uh two-factor authentication and um otp one-time pin and so on um this is for them to secure their their app um in fact we um there's also an in-app security feature wherein you can only enter the app using your biometrics face fingerprint and so on so these are the measure the mechanism for which um we balance user experience with data privacy and security. So uh, that in, in that way, um, first you 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 have them on the user experience first, and then security, and then they'll just trust the system moving forward. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess we will really have to learn how to live uh, with digital payments now because this is gonna be. Uh, this is not going to be short term. This is going to be a long term thing, and one of the things that we must do also is uh, promoting an online business eco ecosystem, and that's one of the questions again from uh, Mr. Sama Costa. How can we promote? How can we I guess build uh, and promote an online business ecosystem that may benefit SMEs down to the grassroots level as we go forward with this crisis? Maybe even you know after this crisis pass. Well, wants to take that. Yeah. So uh, there were there were items kanina that uh, the commissioner mentioned, like trust, diba? So yeah. a lot of people are going online, and that's a given. Because uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you will find a way to be able to move your goods. Now, there are ways of doing it, and there are more secure ways of doing it. The more secure way of doing it is, uh, you know, you go to a platform that's uh, been vetted and it's properly configured. There is another way, and we're seeing this. Eh? There are a lot of uh, uh, scammers out there that uh, are using the online platform to be able to get either your KYC, your, your personal information. Uh, we know that from phishing. Or they will represent themselves as somebody selling an item, then once you pay them, uh, they were they, they don't deliver the goods and some of them will represent themselves as a donation site so there are a lot of scammers out there that are using also the online platforms that are available and you know that's the hazard and that's why from the uh, public's point of view uh, like me as a consumer I will only transact with an SME who is part of a bigger ecosystem that has been vetted and uh, we know the big uh, uh, commerce sites out there also vet and ensure that these uh, people who are selling their stuff are are not scamming people. So, so I guess one way of making sure that uh, you're trusted online is to make sure that you are trusted. And the way you're trusted is how you create your online site, how you create your online persona, and making sure that you really do take very good care of their private information. Uh, that, that's how you do it. Because there are so many ways of going online. 
but there are the proper ways of doing it and there are the more uh, questionable ways of doing it. Okay, thank you. That, that's, Mr. that's from my end, you know. Sam, uh, you'd like to add yeah, to that? Yeah, definitely. You know, I, 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 I'm a big believer in the, the ecosystem approach, you know. Yeah. So most of the time, because our, our uh, entrepreneurs, they're already in the trees view, like they're in the battlefield, right? So this is actually the best time for us to take a breather and then look at the forest view, like what's out there. Like we have, uh, you know, all the time in the world to look at uh, what other countries are doing, for example. Look at the the businesses that emerge from other countries who have already ended their quarantine and yeah. anticipate that you know like uh, it's like you have to anticipate where the ball is going right i mean in basketball when the point guard throws the ball he doesn't throw it where the you know forward is right he'll mm -hmm. throw it where the forward will be you know uh, like uh, in several steps sometimes you do an alley hoop and then you do it so again uh, to, our, to my fellow entrepreneurs uh, out there and of course data private professionals look at ecosystems you know that you're currently in now and look at other ecosystems that you're going to, you know, you believe your uh, competencies, you know, and your costs, you know, will be aligned with. Uh, again, uh, again, attend webinars, you know, uh, consume a lot of, uh, you know, positive content. Uh, sorry, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, great content, you know, that will feed your brain, you know, that will, uh, you know, boost your uh, confidence and at the same time to enrich your heart. So again, go for it. Again, uh, Plugging already, we're going to have ecosystem uh, trainings at uh, Bounce Back Academy. And uh, for NADPOP naman, we're going to have uh, data ecosystem trainings also coming soon. So again, thank you. Great question again on, you know, uh, the importance of ecosystems, you know, to be able to bounce back after the pandemic. Have you have you guys also been seeing uh, ideas uh, and, and ventures from our OFWs? Yeah, uh, well, for... Uh, OFWs, two things. And you know? first, uh, I was asking, just asking Henry, what's the percentage of OFWs who have become digital customers already? Mm -hmm. So there's some residency. So for for uh, uh, OFWs, they're used to already sending money, right, to you know, uh, through online banks. So that one, I think, uh, what they can do is to diversify. You know, uh, make investments during this time. They're if you are into investments, there are a lot of bargain stocks uh, that you can take a look at. Uh, it's important, you know, what we've uh, seen is that those who are prepared financially, you know, who have like six months of uh, savings will be able to weather, you know, the, the disruption created by the pandemic. So, in fact, what, it's one of the things that we encourage MSMEs is to be financially literate. Uh, you know, if you don't have cash right now, uh, you know, it's going to be hard really to bridge, you know, uh, for salaries, for infrastructure cost, and for day-to-day -day needs, right? So, again, go back to basics. You need to really, again, strengthen your competencies as an entrepreneur. Or there's also an option you can go back uh, and uh, you can go to uh, be employed and be an entrepreneur, right? So, or you can probably ask another a bigger business to invest in your company, or you can merge with other businesses, similar businesses. So, there's a lot of ways for you to, you know, again, uh, ride out this crisis. And it's a matter of really looking at the opportunities, and as I said, seizing them, establishing connections. You know, don't be shy. Wag kayo mahiya na magpadala ng PM. Hey, I, I need help. So, talaga raise your hands, ask for help. And there are a lot of uh, you know volunteers who are going to help you, especially during these times. Yun, pupotayin mahiya na humingi ng tulong. Marami pong tutulong sa atin. So. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, for uh, I, I'm thinking uh, these next questions will be for Commissioner Aguirre. Is it uh, this one is from uh, Ana Santos Lopez? Uh, is it permissible for businesses to collect? information like body this is very uh, relevant right now to collect information like body temperature and details of recent travel from employees and business visitors without obtaining prior consent <clears throat> although mm -hmm. medyo mahirap yata kumuha ng recent travel history pati body temperature unless kumuha ka ng consent ng tao di ba kasi you can't forcefully take the temperature of the person naman uh, that that being said, uh, I think it's okay to to check body temperatures. Um, we've seen that even in the days leading to 
to the community quarantine, right? When we enter a building, it's a check nung security guard and in temperature ng tao, or no walang fever. I think that's okay. I don't see any problem with that. To check it, to make sure na okay. But to keep a record of it, I don't think that's necessary. Hindi naman, I don't think kailangan to keep a record of that. For travel history, um, I think it will depend what, what that business wants to do. Um, and we have to distinguish whether the information is being requested from their visitors or their customers. Parang medyo weird, di ba? Bago ka pumasok sa store, uh, sir, saan po kayo nang galing, etc., etc. We have to assume that the proper government agency, the DOH, is the one that will take care of the contact tracing. For their employees, on the other hand, I think it's 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 more permissible to get the travel history because they want to to know whether this particular person has subjected themselves to the required quarantine period, and because they're interacting with this person more, um, assuming we go back to our offices na kahit skeleton force. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it's it's better if you're asking that type of information from your employees. Uh, it's a bit weird to ask for the information from, from customers. At the end of the day, it depends on the purpose of the person or, or the business. There are legitimate criteria under the Data Privacy Act naman for temperature, as long as we don't uh, keep a record of it, just to just check it at the same time for the travel history. But again, I will go back to what I said earlier. It has to be proportional. We have to have a clear purpose why we're collecting this. And what we do with that information has to be aligned with that purpose. We can't do anything beyond that. I, I am guessing the basic idea really is uh, collecting the least amount of information needed. Is yes. that correct? Uh, okay. Yes, yes. Because uh, if we, we, we collect so many things, we also have the burden of protecting that information. At the same time, if we don't really need it, why are we collecting it? If it's not the purpose of the purpose of the purpose of the purpose. Okay. So we have Berna Ang Angpo, uh, who is uh, looking for a for clarification on the terms reasonable and appropriate. So uh, she says the law requires reasonable and appropriate technical and organizational measures to protect personal information. Can you help us understand what reasonable and appropriate means? Uh, okay, just to provide context to it. So the law does say. Uh, Part of the obligations of a personal information controller is to put in place reasonable and appropriate organizational, technical, and physical security measures. So what, what, do the, what does that mean? It means, as far as the National Privacy Commission is concerned, we don't apply a one-size-fits-all approach. Right? Uh, what is appropriate for Union Bank may not be appropriate or reasonable for an MSME. Their resources are different the type of information they process will be different. If we apply the same standards, then baka wala nang natirang kapital yung MSME bago niya maabot yung kailangan niyang maabot na standard. So the way, we, the way we look at it is we use indice standards as the, our baseline. Depends on what type of business you're doing. So if you are in the financial industry, like Union Bank, then we look at what are the appropriate industry standards for that type of processing. Ano yung mga dapat na encryption levels na meron sila? Ano pa yung mga ibang nasusunod ba nila yung mga uh, guidelines issued by BST? But if you are not a company like Union Bank, then as an MSME, you look at what type of information do I collect? What am I, how am I supposed to protect that information if all I'm collecting will be the name, address of the person? Then in order to complete the transaction, I will provide them with my um, a 
account number and they'll just deposit that, then as far as reasonable and appropriate for that particular scenario is concerned, I just have to delete that information as soon as matapos yung transaction. I don't need to do anything beyond that. It's not, I want to clarify to people that reasonable and appropriate does not mean that you have to invest in the latest things, right? Um, there has to be an examination done by the company to understand ano ba yung kinokolekta namin? Uh, sensitive personal information, ba itong mga to? Kailangan ko ba kolektahin itong mga to? And paano ko siya poprotektahan? Take into consideration, one, common sense, second, industry standards. So, hindi naman po siya ganun ka technical talaga kailangan. Uh, maybe Sasa can also chime in from a from the other perspective, from a DPO's perspective. Actually, Depcom, nasabi mo na lahat. <laughs> so, <laughs> in, um, on a DPO standpoint, um, so for us to determine the appropriate technical measures, we ask first the data fields involved. So if it involves some um, sensitive information, personal information, so it increases the level of security that we need to employ um, for um, for non-sensitive naman uh, we mean um, there's um, an acceptable benchmark that we have um, so pag sensitive higher siya like we anonymize we encrypt all level of the file mga ganun. but uh, for SME for MSMEs um, I I suggest that you um, bank on the security features of your providers so you ask them um, the features of what are the security controls that your providers are employing so that uh, you'll also know uh, um, the level of security of the personal information of your clients um, some most of the time because well, you're also using the platforms of the other providers so so there be um, be conscious about those controls of your providers. Mm -hmm. uh, I am uh, follow up lang in Union Bank. What are your principles in keeping uh, data safe and keeping uh, data private and uh, keeping them secure from cyber threats? I guess it's something that uh, the smaller businesses can learn. From. Okay, so in Union Bank, um, all projects undergo privacy impact assessment. When I say all, like everything um even the simplest process of changing a particular function of a big uh, system will have to undergo uh privacy impact assessment and so that um uh, in all change management process uh we're there uh, that's how um serious we are in 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 Yon Bank. and it's also up to the data level um in fact um uh, our role already expanded from data privacy to we're now doing artificial intelligence. So we're drilling down on the data and up to the fairness test. So meaning um, is the processing of this data would be uh, be fair to the to the person or to the to the data subject. So we're drilling down into the data level. So it's not just an enterprise, the macro level, but also uh, more importantly, to the uh, to the nitty gritty of the data, so uh, that's uh, that's how we do things in Union Bank. Quite okay. difficult, but uh, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a worthwhile endeavor. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, in relation to that, we have a question from uh, Christian S. Uh, he's asking. Uh, does NPC or NADPOP have a document available to pub for, for the public to use as a guide by SMEs? <clears throat> Actually, so, so NPC has published a lot of uh, free resources already. Uh, there's a very comprehensive toolkit. You know, uh, the, it's on its third edition. You can download it at the NPC site. It's also uploaded on the NADPOP uh, DPO Central site. And as I mentioned, you know, we started uh, producing ebooks. And this is going to be for free. Our, I can, you know, we're also going to collaborate with the uh, bunch of teams to come up with the guide on data privacy and cybersecurity for MSMEs. Again, these will be uh, given for free to you know members of Bounce Back PH and NADPA. And of course, you know, uh, correspondingly, the webinars are going to happen also. 
Uh, so, one time lang po. Uh, we can actually post it on the bounce box site and the NADPOP site. All of the free resources that MSMEs can use to protect the privacy of their customers and, of course, to secure you know, their uh, cyber infrastructure. Okay. Thank you. I'd, I'd, I'd like to add lang. Um, so not not just specific to SMEs, but there are a lot of resources that are available on the NPC's website, um, privacy.gov.ph. So you have information there on basic privacy principles. You have copies of different presentations available, um, different advisory opinions that the commission has issued, decisions the commission has issued, all of which can help um, address certain concerns of SMEs. And as Sam mentioned earlier, yung mga toolkits, yung mga guides na in ng commission are all also available on the website for download. Okay, thank you. So we have another uh, technical question. It's from uh, Jed Dalangin. Uh, should all the da data sets be started from scratch? Mm -hmm. Or can you just partner with a related business who already has a solid database? Yun. So, uh, I, I saw nga yung pinost dito na tanong eh. So, if I'm an SME, then I'm going to go online. Then that means I'm going to build my data, database uh, from the tribe. See, uh, there are several ways of doing it where you don't have to build everything from scratch. So, one, find a partner where you can have uh, the right data sharing agreement. And yeah, magaling dyan si, ano eh, si Sasa eh. Si Sasa, when uh, several companies want to partner with us, especially fintechs, we immediately go into a legal framework where we check what we can share with one another. Of course, without violating the uh, consent of the data subject. So, yun yung sinasabi ni Sam kanina, ecosystem play. If you're part of an ecosystem, there are some ecosystems there where the customers... Uh, already give consent to the platform provider to be able to share their information. Because if I'm a customer and I want uh, to be able to access many goods out there, then maybe I'll give my consent to share my information to SMEs that are going online. So you don't always have to start from scratch because it's going to be very tough. If it's going to be your first time to be online, better to be part of an ecosystem because there there are data sharing agreements that have already been built into the platform. Okay. Hi, Dagdag ko lang. Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree with everything that Henry said. Just have to make sure that the platform that you're partnering with or the related businesses that you're partnering with have obtained the necessary consent from their data subjects. Because hindi naman lahat ng related businesses would have the same type of uh, arrangement with when it comes to obtaining of consent, the data sharing agreement that Henry mentioned. So hindi pwedeng may related business, mag partner na kayo, automatically pwede na kayo magpalita ng database and pwede mo nang i-access yung database ng business na yun kung sa kanino ka nakipag-partner and you start messaging their customers. So just be mindful that if you are entering into these types of partnerships, ask the partner whether the required consent from their customers have been obtained para walang problema for both parties. But yun nga, as Henry was mentioning earlier, an ecosystem that allows and facilitates this type of sharing would actually be better suited and it will save parties the hassle and the effort of having to reobtain consent because that's an entirely new thing. Kaysa kayo yung gagawa, at least there's already a platform that facilitates that for you. Okay. Sir, uh, isa pang question uh, from Danny Bern Bermudez. Uh, does NPC have new regulations or guidelines for SMEs relevant to the COVID-19 pandemic? So nothing, nothing specific to SMEs, but in terms of guidelines and information on the COVID-19 situation, the National Privacy Commission has uploaded several bulletins 
that are available on our website. Again, it's privacy.gov.ph, and you can take a look at it there. In terms of SMEs, the way we look at it, again, as I mentioned at the top earlier, it's the same thing. You are a personal information controller who will be accountable for all the information that you collect, process, and therefore you're supposed to protect that information. That being said, as an SME, there are certain responsibilities and obligations that don't apply to you. If you don't employ a sufficient number of people, then you don't are not required to register with the National Privacy Commission. If your customers, number of customers are also not substantial, then you're also not required to register with the National Privacy Commission yet. So all of that information is available on our website again. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, we're down to our... Uh, actually, that's the last question. I just have an additional one, maybe to Sir Sam or also to Union Bank. Um, many people or many business owners are starting to... are trying to get their businesses started again if they stalled when the pandemic uh, uh, started. How do they become, I guess, liquid again? Just where can they look for uh, resources relating to uh, loans, uh, that sort of thing? <clears throat> And not just, I guess, not just financial support, but also support from the community. So the question is uh, how to start again. So mm -hmm. you, need, you need to start within you. I mean, everything's uh, here. Uh, we're in a crisis right now, we have to admit that. And then this morning I was attending a session, this crisis is the new normal. You know, you should be here for the long game, you know, uh, or what you call it, you have an infinite mindset. Uh, the world will not end tomorrow. Uh, you know, uh, once a cure is found or a vaccine, you know, has been delivered to the population, then things will slowly ease back to what it used to be. You know, but the new normal, I mean, slightly overused, but you know, like, or the next normal, you know, uh, you're already seeing it. As I mentioned, you know, look at how other countries are, th those that have already, quote unquote, managed the, the pandemic. Like, uh, I was looking at Vietnam. There's this, uh, you know, article showing that kids have gone back already, where they did social distancing, and the kids are all wearing like PPE suits. So in that scenario, you know, uh, again, all of our educators can actually learn from that, so that when classes well scheduled to open on August 24, you know, we'll be able to still, uh, you know, be confident that, uh, you know. Uh, the, the virus can still be managed, or coronavirus can still be managed, you know. Uh, so let's see, start. Start by improving yourself, you know. Uh, as I mentioned already, you know, consume content that will improve yourself, right? Do not uh, consume content that uh, will, you know, diminish yourself during these times. So begin, begin here inside of you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I guess uh, I just want to get uh, everyone's final messages. Uh, for MSMEs, MSMEs approaching. MSMEs, uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, na bulol na ako. MSMEs approaching uh, this immediate feature, going into GCQ and then beyond that. Just your final messages for MSMEs. Bro, naan ko na yellow, so that I can be to last question. Yeah. Uh, what support can uh, the SMEs get? So, uh, yeah. again, I'm going to mention the service that we provide in Global Linker. Uh, we, we, talk, we already mentioned kanina how they go online now. Uh, critical portion nowadays is the financing. Uh, so, if you go on Global Linker, you, you will find help in terms of understanding financing, refinancing, and your rights also. Uh, Global Linker partnered with the law firm Moss Belt Law. And from there, they will actually have lawyers there to help you uh, understand what the Bayanihan Act uh, provides and how you can, uh, uh, what are your rights with regards to your loan. Now, on availing of loans themselves, specifically for SME, uh, we have a fully owned subsidiary called UBX uh, mm -hmm. and partnered with a company called SICAP. SICAP is S E E S E E K uh, C. And CAP is CAP, so parang SIC Capital. So CAP is available also online. And from there, you can uh, uh, avail of some SME loans uh, subject to you know some requirements. But uh, 
uh, it's really geared towards uh, providing financing for SMEs. CCAP, by the way, uh, not just in the Philippines, they're also in the ASEAN region. And uh, the reason why we partnered with them is because they've been very successful in providing SME financing to a lot of SMEs uh, in other countries. One of them is Indonesia. So last year, uh, our UBX subsidiary partnered with them, signed an agreement in Singapore, and we brought that uh, service here in the Philippines. So uh, they just need to just go to any of our Union Bank website and, or they can Google it and they'd be able to see it now. As a parting shot, siguro, uh, sabi nga ni, nila, all things, uh, all things come to an end. This crisis too will end. And what doesn't uh, kill you makes you stronger. And in the history of humanity, when there's a major crisis, uh, we come out much, much stronger. So I'm, I'm, I'm really... Uh, confident that uh, as we survive, after we've survived this uh, situation, the SMEs will find ways of making their businesses much, much stronger. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have a question. No? So this one is from Kiko Rojas. Are our current laws sustainable vis-a-vis uh, -vis the current situation? Are we facing challenges as to the full implementation of the Data Privacy Act as to online business and monetary transactions? Uh, I actually don't think that our current laws are insufficient for the current situation. I think that our law is broad enough to cover online businesses and it has covered online businesses even before this particular situation. It does cover monetary transactions, so wala naman tayong problema dun. Um, the law is broad enough, nga, as I said, to cover this. I think the challenge is because of this rush to to move digitally for a lot of our MSMEs. The challenge is for the not so much in terms of enforcing the Data Privacy Act, but I think the challenge is for everyone to get on the same level of being comfortable with the requirements of what the Data Privacy Act is. And we in the National Privacy Commission, we look at it not so much as we are policemen enforcing the law. What we'd like to tell people is we're here to help them better comply with the requirements set out in the Data Privacy Act. So that's why if you look at our website there are so many resources there um, that are available to help our msmes better comply with the requirements of the law if there are something that they feel is missing they can reach out to us and we can help them walk through the requirements nila para makapag comply sila. so also there are organizations like nadpop that will be more than able to help all these MSMEs better comply. So, kami po, uh, hindi namin nakikita na kulang yung law. I think it's sufficient. The challenge lang is to get that message across to all of these different people who may not have been as aware before this current situation. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, before we, re we resume with the final messages, I would just like to invite everyone again that uh, this will be a series of webinars and next week we will also be holding another one on thursday may 14 uh, 3 30 p.m with deputy director general chuchi fonasher of the banco central ng filipinas and jerry coloma of moss belt law offices um, our very own rappler multimedia reporter ralph rivas will be moderating it and uh Keep it here for more of these uh, webinars, which we hope have been uh, helpful uh, for you. Okay, our final messages. Who wants to begin? <laughs> Maybe I'll go first. No. Beauty first, um, beauty. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to invite the all MSMEs. Uh, since you're the owner of your respective businesses, so you're also the data protection officer. Um, so if uh, you need help with respect to your privacy compliance or anything, just um, 
use the Global Linker platform of Pro Project Lifeline. Um, we'll be happy to help you. Uh, for if you also want to partner with Union Bank, um, all of our partners know this that we also help them with their privacy compliance and how to properly um, craft the consent and the privacy notices that are necessary for our engagement. And I hope that this um, this pandemic would enable us to you know to rethink about our businesses and how it should be uh, it can be more resilient moving forward and put privacy by design in your respective businesses so you kind of um we can also help you there have a privacy impact assessment of your respective uh businesses so you know um what are the pro proper privacy policy that you should um put in place so there um hope to see you there in project lifeline thank you thank you and uh i guess sir Sam? Okay, Sasa. Yeah, so I'd like to repeat what I said middle of the, no? so, uh, you know, in this uh, webinar, you already have uh, partners that you can work with. So I'll just repeat, you know, number one for, to my fellow entrepreneurs, uh, let's stand on the shoulders, you know, of nimble and agile giants like Union Bank, you know, their, their services are aligned towards our needs. So let's, you know, partner with them. And secondly, let's stand side by side, you know, with guardians like the National Privacy Commission. So as, uh, you know, uh, Commissioner Aguirre said, uh, Go to the NPC website or throw them a line. They're going to help us. Okay. And third, you know, uh, be nurtured by communities like NADPOP and Bounce Back PH. You know, there are a lot of uh, fellow MSMEs, you know, and volunteers who are going to help you there. And last but not least, you know, let's begin within and we can bounce back better together. Thank you for those inspiring words, sir. And who wants to go next? Yellow yeah, no, before I see, I know, see Commissioner. Uh, ano lang, sinabihan ako kasi na, uh, there are people from Union Bank say, ano eh, messaging me. Eh. We just want to summarize everything that we're do doing right now in digital just to tell the public, uh, stay safe and bank from your homes. Uh, Union Bank is here and if you're an SME, we'll provide you all the necessary tools so that you can do your businesses from home as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And sir Aguirre. So I think um, marami na po tayo na pag-usapan, di ba? Ang, for us in government, in the National Privacy Commission, we don't want to overcomplicate privacy. We just want, we want people to look at it in terms of several questions. Are they doing the right thing? Is it something that they're okay if it's done to them? And a lot of it, as I mentioned earlier, is common sense. So we want, to help you um, be better able to comply with the requirements of the Data Privacy Act. Hindi po nandito ang NPC para magpolis, matnaakot, sabihin sa inyo ito yung fine, ito yung mga kaukulang penalties, hindi po ganun. Ang point ng NPC, dito kami para tulungan kayo because only by working together will we be able to build a culture of privacy, not just for MSMEs, but for the Philippines in general, because tulong tulong uh, any security issue is only as, sorry, sec the security of companies, the security of the Philippines is only as strong as its weakest link. So, magtulungan po tayo para mabuild natin tong culture of privacy, data security, data protection. So, with that, we have different partners. That you have different partners that you can go to. And then dito po yung National Privacy Commission para tulungan din kayo. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, we'd like to thank our viewers for joining us today. I hope uh, this has been helpful for you. And I hope it was also enjoyable to our speakers, uh, Mr. Henry Aguda, Mr. Leandro Aguirre, Ms. Maria Montes, and Mr. Samuel Jacoba. Uh, please join us in our next webinars. Thank you for watching. This has been Jello Gonzalez.